when it comes to security uh we talked about this in the last uh, in our last uh, po- ano um podcast na yung problem kasi nga is he ni neglect niya yung security issues at marami siyang mga lapses sa security and that's what gave rise to the Duterte types traffic Ngayon, traffic and dami problema traffic yeah. the infrastructure Lag- and yung, na- laglagbala yung ganun tanimbala so there's a lot eh pero at the same time now uh with Marcos naman with what he's doing so far tama yung mga ginagawa niyang steps he's addressing a lot of issues that are very close to Filipinos and nakikita mo that he's allowing the system to work and it's looks it looks like it's working primarily at least window dressing niya maganda it looks like it's working i'll give you a very good example of napanood mo ba kanina wala ko napanood mo yung malakanyang press con na ginawa nila kanina with John Vic Remulla ay hindi ko napanood para kasi kanina Trump Trump lang go ahead you have the okay. stage better and for so, here's the thing about this one that's really interesting ano yung malakan yung press press conference na ginawa first time ko nakita nagkaroon sila ng press con in a very long time and ang ganda ng pagkagawa with the lights and sounds the bells and whistles the AVPs and then John Vic Ramula comes out and <clears throat> John Vic Ramula for people that don't know is a new DILG chief right at ato na binanggit niya yung mga nakita niyang problema when it comes to uh, do sa Bilibid prison and uh, the na napansin nila that the drug lords and drug dealers in Bilibid are still active in the drug trade that's proliferating all over the Philippines in addressing the fact that they even addressed it tells you that they're serious about fighting this fighting it legally and with force in the right way so that is a great signal and John Vick has a lot of a bit, very big shoes to fill kaya ang ganda talaga nung timing yan ito Brother, can I rewind a little bit on that? Because I think perfect segue yan. Because matagal na namin sinisabi yan. Kami nila Ronald, RM, bati tayo dun sa mga discussion natin na medyo, medyo hilaw yung messaging ni BBM na parang mga Duterte pa rin na nagda-dominate. Sila yung nag-dictate ng terms ng uh, essentially the fight. Di ba? Na that's, that's always the number one rule. Do not allow yung kalabo na mag-dictate. Ano yung terms of engagement? Dapat ikaw may masabi ka. So, Last week, isa sa mga na-appreciate ko sa sa Quadcom is yung ginawa ni uh, Congressman Barbers na kinumpare niya, di ba? Ito yung number of operations ni Digong. Ito yung number of yep. operations. Ito yung daming namatay dito. Dito wala masyado. Ito, maraming pa rin kami na confiscate. So parang clear uh, juxtaposition, di ba? Sabi ko sana lang, hindi lang dalawang admin para hindi mukhang BBM siya. Kung sana tatlo-apat na admin. Tapos ipakita mo, kay Digong, bara-bara lang. At uh, yep. yung... Know, Sobrang na-appreciate. Eh, sabi ko, yan ang dapat gawin ng Malacanang. Yan ang dapat message yes. nila. Anong polvoron gaya ng polvoron? Kayo ang polvoron. Patay ka ng patay. Hindi naman na-solve yung drug problem. Kami, maayos. Surgical. Kalib. Ganda nung sinabi ni Barbers. So, I, I'm glad that you're saying ginagawa rin ng iba yan. Mukhang they're, they're getting their thing together, no? Yeah, so so what's interesting is, remember, si Marcos himself doesn't say much. Di ba? Ini-interview siya. Hindi siya sasagot. Hindi siya magsasagot. lang. No comment palagi. Pero, What's good is he allows the different departments of government to speak. He puts them in the forefront. I really like, and I'm not a fan, by the way, I'm not a fan of John Vic Remulia. Okay? Because of especially the fact that he's with Cavite and there was a big pogo in Cavite. I always had my doubts with his uh, sincerity with the work. Pero nung lumabas siya sa, sa press con niya at nagsalita siya ng ganun laban sa droga that was a strong statement and he's very eloquent John Vigramul is a very eloquent guy so he said it plainly para maintindihan ng lahat ng mga tao what he plans to do number one would believe it and then he goes then the next problem we have is that the drug war is actually a lot of importations so there's a big leak with the importations we know about ng problema ng panahon ni Duterte ay pinabayaan niya yun Well, yun na nga eh, kasi nga, di ba nga, isipin mo ha? Kaya nga, magdududa ka kung talagang sincere si Duterte sa drug war niya. Kasi nga, nung panahon niya, remember, binuksan nga niya yung port ng Davao to Chinese military ships with nothing inside. Chinese Navy boats coming in with nothing inside. Parang, Pero wala what's going agreement. on? So, uh, remember, d- uh, yung dahilan na meron tayong visiting forces agreement or status of force is just in case, God forbid, yung isa sa mga Amerikano may nangyari sa kanila or nag sila, Meron kang legal framework. So yes, yung, ito wala. Ito, pumapasok, wala man lang legal framework. Paano ko napatay yung isa? May pinatay, may na-rape. So sobrang bara-bara, suspicious yep. talaga si Digong, brother. Yeah, and you saw that how Digong did it before was talagang there was no rule of law. 
it was his law or no law. And yun ang chaos na nangyari noong panahon ni Digong. Now, then, so binanggit ni John Victor Mulia nga na, okay, so these are the two problems you have with drugs. These are on the top level. And he was even explaining na yung labanan kasi hindi dahil sa mga pushers. Ang problema natin is nandito yan na hindi ina-address sa taas. Ngayon, a-address na natin. And I was like, wow, to be able to do a press con and say that, I hope you're going to be able to walk the walk because you have just declared that you're going to do it. If they succeed in doing it, Marcos administration is going to even be stronger and more popular than it. Like, I mean, it's going up in popularity. But now, tama yung mga steps na ginagawa nila. So what I'm saying is that the right, if, if Sara Duterte ever decides to run, so far what I'm seeing is that Marcos is addressing all the ills of our society. Enough to be able to make the people trust him and his administration. That if Duterte decide to make a comeback, they try. May hirapan sila on that end. So on the doing and undoing of the pre the current administration. On the other side, uh, remember that the problem, because with you know, we like Trump had a comeback because that's Trump. So it's the same person. The Gong is not gonna run again. He can't. Anak niya now, si it's Sara, yeah. Right, and now you're talking about. The next of kin. The problem with next of kin is, does do they have the same charisma? No, it's obvious they don't. They carry the last name, and maybe the last name is good enough. I don't know. Pero from the way I see it, Fiona right now, magaling yung ginagawa ng mga ano ah. Wait, let let me clarify. Are you referring to? <laughs> well, I, I apparently I just realized because nga dan pinalala lang pala sa akin that. Don't say my name. Don't put my name in your mouth. Di ba? May ganon palagi that never speak my name. May ganon. So kaya let's just call her na lang Fiona. Para I mean I just wanna abide by her wishes. Sabi niya wag daw gagamitin yung pangalan niya. Iba bangit yung pangalan niya. So and I couldn't think of another name. Sarah without H. Sarah without H. Right. Okay. So so anyway. So yun yung point ko dito is that si Fiona kasi hindi siya as charismatic. And ang dami niyang blunders ngayon. Which we're gonna get to, I'm sure. We're gonna be talking about that. Pero ang dami niyang blunders right now that she's going through. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So you. I mean, the way I said, she's a poor copy of an originally poor. Right. And then, and then, tell me something. You really think Baste is better? Kulong? Oh my God, Lloyd. Baste nga na demote sa vice mayor na pinabobo. Exactly. Tapos ito ang problema niya ngayon. Si Digong sinasabi, ayaw na nga niya magpolitika. Pagod na nga daw siya. Eh. And he's running for mayor. And he's saying he doesn't even want to do it. How do you win an election when you yourself are saying, I don't want to do it? So people aren't going to... I'm telling you, Richard, if Digong loses 2025, the election for mayor, there you go. That's yeah. things to come. If 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 the the just to be clear, all that we say here is analysis, not this endorsement or moral right. uh, judgments. Para sa akin, mahina yung communications ni BBM so far. Not only because BBM himself ay masadong timing, blah blah blah. Pero pati yung mga tao niya medyo kapos. Until now na medyo gumagalaw na kay barbers, ngayon kay Remulia, ganun. So, una-una sa level ng communication, siguro may mga matutunan din sila sa ginawa ng... I mean, saan yung mga troll nila? Ay, sorry, sorry. Saan yung mga vloggers nila? Saan yung vloggers nila? Di ba? Kailangan mo yan. Kasi ano yun eh? It's, it's about um, shaping public opinion. So, medyo mahina sila sa communication strategy. Pero tamang sanabi mo, mukhang bumabawi na sila habang lumalapit tayo sa elections. Pangalawa naman dito kay Digong, agree ako sa'yo. Um, Uh, delikado si uh, Polong I think hindi ako masurprise na manalo pa si Migs Nograles Sa mayor, yes, I think Duterte can echo out the victory here But for how long can he you know, hold on? Uh, he doesn't look like his best I think he's more like Biden than Trump when it comes to yep. aging so far Although I would say Biden is still far you know, more Si Biden mas okay pa mga kay tatay I mean, again, I, wanna be, I don't want to be unfair here But so my limitation, tama ka um, The difference will be it will be Sarah Nevertheless, kasi ang pansin ko sa mga Duterte's pares, meron talaga silang hatak, hindi lang sa Davao. Meron silang Vizmin. Yung Mindanao base yeah. sila solid talaga eh. So, if hindi, if nothing is done about that, pwede nilang gawin ulit yan as a locomotive to build, rebuild again a, a pan-Bisaya mm. vote base. So, ang, hindi ko sinasabi na mangyayari ito. Ang dami nang gagalas. Richard, ito ka na naman, binibigyan mo ng pag-asa yung mga DDS. Sabi ko, hindi. Ang sinasabi ko lang, Exactly kadung siya. Kung complacent yung mga liberals, kung hindi nagagawin yung assignment nila, and then kung CBBM doesn't see this through, and we all know what I mean here, paka ya 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 rin siya. Kasi kung makabalik ang mga Duterte, vengeance is my ano na yan, my motto. Yeah, yeah. 
talagang yayarin si BBM and all dyan. So, I'm just saying, crucial talaga the next 12 to 16 months na itong yes. Quadcom. So, I want to ask you, brother, dito sa Quadcom, anong basa mo dito sa last week nangyari? Can we break that down again? Uh, you are the hearing expert. So now, meet of discussion natin. Can we break down the Quadcom and then what's next? At in fairness dito, di ba, si Senator De Lima was good. This time, yes. oh, ayos siya. So, nakinig siya sa atin. Yep. <laughs> I think she is. So, ang galing, galing. And of course, to be fair, hindi na siya surrounded ng paktotom ni Duterte. Yes. So, she could do her job. So, now, can we break down that Quadcom meeting, brother? You're the expert. Okay. So, unang-una, no, they did the Quadcom hearing in two parts. They actually compartmentalized it very well. Eh. Yung first part was talking about the drug war and everything about the drug war. And then the second part, pinag-usapan nila yung mga EJ case. So, yung first part na to was interesting because yung resource person nila was si Rose Nonolin. Dinala din nila dito si Asierto at saka si Jimmy Guban. At yung mga pinag-usapan nila is yung ties ni Duterte with Michael Yang, with Alan Lim, and Johnson Chua to the drug trade. Let's talk particularly about Michael Yang and Alan Lim. Asierto kasi is claiming that Michael Yang is a drug lord. And Alan Lim is a drug lord. So, Two very different issues to us. Number one, when I heard Asierto talk, ano, I was saying this in one of my videos, na hindi ako, pag pinaking ulo si Asierto, lahat ng sinabi niya about Michael Yang being in the drug trade was based on his informant. That's it. He offered no other evidence to corroborate his informant's testimony. Kaya mahirap magpin or magkaroon ng legal case based on an informant and no other corroborative evidence. But, Ang magaling dito is, ayan, this is where Rose Nonalyn comes in. Rose Nonalyn is the wife of Lin Wei Xiong, yung uh, who they have as an alias as Alan Lim. Pero uh, it was so weird to see Rose Nonalyn deny na yung asawa niya is Alan Lim. She kept insisting that Lin Wei Xiong is the husband and not Alan Lim. Pero nung pinakita yung picture ni Alan Lim, katabi ni Duterte at katabi ni Michael Yang, sasabihin niya, yeah, that's my husband, Lin Wei Xiong. Not Alan Lim. Pero sabi ni Asierto, that photo, that's Alan Lim. Everyone in PIDEA, every PNP official knows that's Alan Lim. Even Duterte knows that's Alan Lim. And Alan Lim and Michael Yang are close business associates. And apparently, di sa Quadcom lumalabas, there's a possibility and looks like ipoprove to ng isang Quadcom member na magpinsan pala itong dalawang to. Ngayon, Rose Nonolin is still claiming na hindi daw yun si Alan Lim. Magpinsan si weird. Lin and, and Michael Yang? Y Yang and Lin are pinsan? Yes, apparently daw. So, ah. pe pero ngayon, ang sinasabi kasi niya, no, ni Rose Nona Lin, na, na yung nahuling, uh, kasi nahuli si Alan Lim in a drug raid in 2003. Tapos, na-dismiss yung kaso on na technicality. Based on Section 21, yung the way they custody and, uh, and looked at the evidence, sloppy yung paggagawa, and then they use that, so na-dismiss. Kaya sabi niya, kaya hindi daw si Alan Lim. Pero remember that, uh, well, for most people, you don't know this, ano, pero Rose Nonalyn kasi only married uh, Lin Wei Xiong in 2009 na. So, six years after, mayaman na daw siya. Sabi, tinanong, how'd you get your money? Oh, mayaman na yung asawa ko. So, ngayon, Rose Nonalyn was talking about all her businesses. Ngayon, ito yung interesting. Binanggit niya lahat ng negosyo niya and all of them are holding companies, real estate companies, and non-operational companies. And, a lot of the partners in these companies are all mainland Chinese. And inamin niya na business partner niya si Michael Yang. Ngayon, ito lang para sa akin. Michael Yang, we found out in the Squadcom hearing, is the owner of DCLA Plaza. DCLA Plaza is known by all the PIDEA to be one of the biggest hubs where a lot of drug, drug dealing happens and drug pushing happens in that mall. Everyone knows it. So, and even the bodyguard of... Uh, Sanyon, brother? Sanyon, DCLA? Sa, sa Davao. Davao. Yeah. So, pati yung driver at bodyguard ni Duterte, sabi, yeah, Michael Yang owns DCLA Plaza. Everyone knows. He kept repeating it over and over. What The funny part is when the driver kept repeating it and the bodyguard repeated it, nakikita mo talagang, oh, shoot, so Michael Yang does own the plaza and a lot of drug dealing happens in that plaza. Ah, now, there's a connection between Michael Yang and the drugs that are going through in Davao. Plus, apparently, a lot of the shipping documents were prepared by Michael Yang. Or at least, that came from here to allow the shipments to go through. 
So kaya dito mo nakikita na teka lang, meron natang connection talaga to and then Lascania spoke. And if you looked at Lascania's testimony, it corroborated a lot of what Asherto was saying. And remember, Lascania and Asherto don't know each other. And yet the the stories all corroborate much. So na trying to yes. exactly. Yes, and, na, and then coordinated scripted. Absolutely. And hindi pa yon. Dagdag mo pa si Jimmy Guban, who's the customs intelligence officer, who now co corroborates the picture of yung mga magnetic lifters na nanggaling sa shipment, sa customs na biglang nawala. And then sinabi nga sa kanya na wag daw banggitin yung pangalan ni Michael Yang, ni Duterte, ni Man Scarpio, ni Pulong, dahil papapatay ka, lahat yon And then yung nagbanta sa buhay ni Jimmy Guban na pumasok sa loob ng Senado while he was detained is this reporter that's connected, obviously, is a, he seems like a DDS. Um, tinanong siya, bakit ka ba pumasok? At paano ka nakapasok? Gusto lang daw niya tanongin kung kumusta lang daw yung health ni Jimmy Guban. Well, it turns out na, no, that, that's all BS. And it, you could tell the guy was lying. Eh. So, all of these things corroborated. Nakikita mo talaga, it paints a very clear picture that Michael Young and Alan Lim are really close to Duterte and that's why they've never been tagged. And, To just go back, ano, Asherto kasi, kaya siya napunta sa hit list ni Dugdigong because he came up with the first report. In that first report, sinabi niya, there's an Alan Lim and Michael Yang that's coming out in my in my report na mukhang drug lords. Then, hindi inaksyon na ng PNP. Ang nangyari, they ignored that report and nagalit si Duterte. And then the second report, dun niya na-realize niya, wait a minute, Michael Lang is the ekonomo. Oh my God, Michael Lang is close to Duterte pala, kaibigan niya to. And Alan Lim. So he's, he made the second report saying, uh, we have a problem kasi I think Michael Lang and Alan Lim are connected to the president. And boom, it was at that point that Duterte, binantaan na yung buhay niya na kailangan siya ipapatay. And yung mga kasamahan niya, Sherto, ay namatay nga talaga. So dun mo nakita where the problem lies. And remember, Digong always defended Michael Yang. If somebody is supposed to nag, nagtataka kung drug lord to, bakit de-defend mo? Then investigahan. No sacred cows, di ba? And Wala, then, lang, uh, presidential advisor on economic affairs itong tao. Tayo. Exactly. He's a Chinese citizen. He doesn't have a business being a presidential advisor. Exactly. So, so and then, uh, ito pa. And then, he binanggit pa niya that Michael Yang, hindi naman daw drug lord yan, drug addict lang daw yan. Oh, teka lang. Oh, oh, you're saying he's a drug addict and you know that? And, And you're talking about a drug when you're saying you hate addicts and katabi mo siya as your economic advisor. What's wrong with you? Exactly. Selective justice. Yeah. So Selective. yun yung nangyari doon sa Quadcom. So Rose Nonalyn, uh, litong-lito na siya. She kept the, this was a really interesting moment in the Quadcom hearings. Eh. She kept denying that Alan Lim was her husband. Sabi niya hindi yan daw yung asawa niya si Lin Wei Xiong. Jinky Luistro, Congressman Luistro. Magaling to si Luistro eh. She goes, Um, I have a question. Um, so, anong tawag mo sa kanya sa bahay? Wei Xiong? Xiong? Wei? Ano tawag mo? Baka may ibang pangalan. Ano ba? I mean, I, I don't know. Or, baby, what do you call him? Gano, sabi ni Rose Nonalyn. Well, um, you know, his friends call him Jeffrey. This is where she slipped. Because at the start of the hearing, tinanong ni Congressman Don Gonzalez sa kanya, si Alan Lim, Lin Wei Xiong and all the other aliases including a Jeffrey Lim, siya ba yung asawa mo? And she goes, no, hindi. Yan ang asawa ko. Ang asawa ko si Lin Wei Xiong. And then after three or four hours, nabanggit niya yung word na Jeffrey. And at the end of the hearing, the PIDEA, current PIDEA chief, si, um, I forget his name, um, the current PIDEA chief said, eto po yung mga aliases ni Lin Wei Xiong. And lumabas ulit yung pangalan ni Jeffrey Lin or Jeffrey Lim. And doon nakita mo na nagsisinungaling etong si Rose Nonolin. And one thing that I'm surprised with the Quadcom, and I understand, pagod na sila eh, bakit wala sa kanilang naka, 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 nakarinig na ito, nagsabi, oye, teka lang, sinabi mo, so ibig sabihin, alam mo nga, na siya pala yon At hindi lang yon Dapat talaga tanungin sa kanya, no? kasi she keeps claiming that legit yung mga business niya. Remember, formally, formally pharmaceutical is different from formally biological yung kumpanya niya. Kaya hindi daw siya connected sa formally pharmaceutical, iba daw yan. Pero, yung incorporator ng Farmally Biological is the president of Farmally Pharmaceutical. And, dinenay niya na may Farmally Holdings. Wala daw. And then, nung binuksan yung sec papers ni Dan Fernandez, lumabas doon that Farmally Biological was entirely owned by Farmally Philippine Holdings who she kept denying existed. 
and the owner of Parmali Holdings is a na inamin niya is a Singaporean. The Singaporean's name is Wang Wang Ziyan. Wang Ziyan. And then itong si Wang Ziyan is in Taiwan with his dad Tony Wang who's wanted and is already a facing charges. Ko ng pandemic time sa hearings lumalabas tumama. Yeah. Yeah. They were charged with securities fraud and stock manipulation. And yun na. So lumalabas na ito eh. Kaya nga, ang hirap i-deny talaga. Kay, mahirap talaga i-deny yan. At alam natin talaga, makikita mo talaga na mukhang shell companies ang itong mga sinasetup ni Rose Nonalyn at sinasetup niya daw para sa asawa niyang si Lin Wei Xiong. Kasi kung tutusin, pag tinanong mo sa ano ba negosyo niyo, sasabihin lang niya real estate. Eh paano kayo nagkakuha ng pera ng ganyang kalaki para magkaroon ng ganyang karaming real estate? Walang Pag-a-ans nagtanong sa kanya nun. May pagka-Alice Go vibes na ang nangyari. Yes. Just to be clear about this, bro, no? Are we going... Kasi yung barber's opening was essentially saying, yeah, maybe Duterte had good intentions, but the methodology was wrong, right? And this is how to do it properly. But base sa sinasabi mo, base sa pagkaalam natin, base sa mga lumalabas sa mga iba't ibang hearings, it's more like hindi rin tayo sigurado kung maganda talagang intention ni Digong. Hindi actually tayo sigurado kung war on drugs talaga nangyari. So medyo next level attack na siya, no? Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, yeah, and not just that. Um, so that what I talked about the whole time was just the part one. And then yung part two was the EJ case. Exactly. This is where it gets interesting with the EJ case. So dumating na yung driver bodyguard ni Duterte from 1988 to 2008, two decades with Duterte. Do sumipot sa Quadcom hearing si Sunny Benaventura na na sobrang ano, sobrang interesting tong character nito. You can tell he's a hardened policeman. Hardened talaga to ah, na walang tinatakutan to that he's seen a lot. You can tell by the way he talks. He sits there with such a calm, almost uh, psychotic demeanor. Okay? It's almost like a uh, Basta nakikita mo meron parang blankness in his eyes when I was looking at this on a Quadcom. And then, Flash siya yung... <laughs> oh, parang walang soul. No, I'm not kidding. Pag tinignan mo talaga, parang walang soul. Anyway, so he sits there and then they start to interpolate this guy. What's interesting is he denied na may death squad. Pero yung pagka-deny niya, yung patawa-tawa na parang, eh, oh, sabi nila meron, pero wala akong alam. So sabi, 20 years pagka sabi, wala akong alam. Wala. Uh, oh. Oh, so he kept lying. He was lying to his teeth. So, Jinky Luis, alam mo, Jinky Luis, so I'm gonna do a top five ano eh, uh, key moments of Jinky Luis kasi she is such a sharp interpolator. So, tanong siya. So, alam mo ba yung death squad? Hindi, wala akong alam. Alam mo ba mga si Duterte? Wala. Pero inamin ni Duterte. Eh, siya umamin. Hindi ako, wala akong alam. Pero umamin na ni si Las Cañas, si ganon, si ganyan. Lahat ng mga kakilala mo, umamin. Si Samo, hindi pa rin totoo. Ewan eh, ko sa kanila, pero wala akong alam. You're 20 years with him and wala kang alam. And then, walang sinasabi. And then, Jinky switches gears. And then she goes, I have a question. Di ba 20 years ka kay Duterte? Yes. Gano'n ka bait si Duterte? Babait po. Gano'n ka bait? Well, yung asawa ko may cancer. Tapos tinulungan niya. Oh, so kaya you're, you're close him. Yes po. At saka nakita ko po paano siya tumulong ng mga tao. Ganyan-ganyan. At galit siya sa mga kriminal. Hmm, okay, nakikinig lang si Luis. And then she goes, so 20 years ka, you're, would you say you're loyal to him? He goes, yes ma'am. Ang bilis ha, yes ma'am. How loyal? From 1 to 10, how loyal would you be? 1 to 10? 10. So you would be so loyal to him. Are you willing to give your life for him? Yes, ma'am, I'm willing to give my life for him. Would you be willing to say... Oh, sabi niya, would you be willing to say anything just to protect him? Yes, ma'am, I would. And then she goes, willing ka ba magsinungaling para sa kanya? And then he goes, uh, no, of course not. Sinasabi mo, willing... So binali ka ni Jinky, sabi niya, sinasabi mo, willing kang mamatay para kay Duterte, hindi ka willing magsinungaling? Aminin mo. Sabi, ginano niya, aminin mo, willing kang sabihin na kahit na anong kailangan sabihin para maprotektahan siya. And the guy looked at her blankly, hindi na sumagot. And then, dito pumasok si Abante. Later on, Abante catches him na. Abante said to him, Alo, alam mo kung anong klaseng tao si Duterte? And, Opo. Pag, pag may tiwala siya sa'yo, pag wala siyang tiwala sa'yo, pag wala siyang tiwala sa'yo, ano sa'yo yung mga nyari sa'yo? Mamamatay ka, no? Sabi niya, Opo. Inami niya. Yeah. Opo. And then he goes, okay. So kaya hindi ka maka kaya hindi mo siya pwedeng uh, parang uh, i-double cross. Kasi alam mo, pag ma-double cross ka, mapapatay ka niya. And then he goes, opo. Boom. Oh, alam, na, alam na yung modus operandi. Yeah. Yan eh. Kaya nga nakita mo talaga eh. Sabi niya, alam niya kung nung klaseng si tao si Duterte, kaya ayaw niya i-double cross. Ayun na. Boom. So, 
this quad of com hearing magaling talaga tong mga ating mga congressist wow, wow. different styles of interpolating will break you down and kahit pa paano mahuhuli ka ang problema lang pag nahuli nila sometimes sa sobrang haba ng quad com hearings hindi na rin nila nahuhuli yung mga sagot <laughs> kaya kailangan nila basahin yung transcript pan urin ulit yung ginawa nila or maybe listen to vloggers like us who are so obsessed with this at titingnan natin at bubusisihin natin ang every part of it. Yung, yung ginagawa mo at saka ginagawa natin anyway kasi hina-highlight natin yung mga missed highlights or hina-highlight natin yung mga self-incriminating sites. Actually, sa totoo lang, kung hindi natin pinag-usapan yung hearing ni Digong, baka nakalusot pa yung mga DDS line na, dude, tignan mo, rockstar, nagpapatawa siya. Pero nung nag-zoom in tayo sa mga sinabi niya at yung, doon talaga, napansin ko ha, hindi, al, nag-gets na rin ng mga DDS yung sinasabi na hindi gumana, yung rockstar si Digong. <laughs> O nga, right. no, pa, pinahamak na yung sarili niya. No? So, mahalaga talaga yung trabaho ng mga netizens, katulad natin, no? na i-patize yeah. talaga. So, thanks bro for doing that. So, what are you saying is, ang dami mga self-incriminating parts din nangyari. Ang dami mga ano, booking, booking moment. Yes. And, and, and I understand naman talaga na ang hirap talaga sundan lahat to at ma-pick up lahat to because when people are watching... Remember, 12 hours! 12 Yeah, it's exactly. Yung after one, lalakad ka, alis ka, you're gonna listen, you're gonna lose on... Hindi ka makakafocus eh. I had to literally sit in front of the computer and sometimes rewind parts. Paulit ulit ako, did he really say that? May ganun ako before I even make a video. It's very difficult to catch these things but I'm glad that at least now mga netizens buhay na rin. They support the stuff that we do. It's important and nagsasalita ang ating mga netizens ngayon. Yun ang importante. They're part of the fight to be able to flesh out all the, the truths and the facts para hindi na tayo mabudol ulit. So yun yung ano. Uh, Idadagdag ko lang uh, by the way that Rappler did a really good piece Bro. where sinabi nga nila yung Dubai property ni Rose Nonolin na binili nila immediately after the family contract. Oh, kaya nga BSL, ang bait niya actually, ang bait ng quad kong kay Rose Nonolin eh. Honestly, with all the lies she said, I would have cited her in contempt and I would have put her in jail. I mean in the, in the cong congressional jail. Parang si ano... Si ano yung sa polvoro ni Ring ni Bato. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Yeah, that, that was terrible. Uh, wow. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was terrible. Uh, by the way, anong, may tanong din ako. Uh, anong reading mo dun sa Barbers and Bato having back and forth? Kasi hina, ah, well, pinagawa nila yung sinabi natin. Hamunin nyo na yung Senado kasi Japix naman sila eh. Well, you know, I think Senate right now is looking so bad na rin naman eh. Um, the last hearing they did with Duterte was terrible. Uh, and people saw it. Alam mo, kahit na anong pagsispin ng mga Duterte trolls na dahil bayad sila to do it, ano, ang hirap ispin talaga yung nangyari doon. Eh, na obvious talaga na narattle si Duterte, narattle siya talaga ni, ni Senator Riza. And like I've always said, and we, we talked about this several times, listen, you cannot create the logical fallacy of I'm right because I'm a lawyer. Gawin mo kayo sa Congress. Ayan na. Attorney Jinky Luistro. So buka mo sabihin, you can't say that because I'm a lawyer. Well, I'm a lawyer too. Oh, attorney Keith Flores. Oh, ang daming mga attorney diyan, ang daming mga police diyan. Yung mga police na tulad ni na ako. Oh, subukan mo siyang intimidate, hindi mo intimidate yung mga ganon. Kaya tingin ko talaga dito magbi-behave si Duterte at he has no choice. But I think that with the right line of questioning, he they can disarm him to be able to really not just admit but confirm the truth. Kasi do sa Senate ang nakita kong Sayang na, na I understand Senator Riza kasi ang hirap ng trabaho niya eh. Na pag may nag-pick up sana noon o may kasama si Senator Riza, pwede mo sabihin kay Duterte, I just want to confirm that you did say that. Right now, pakiulit lang to make sure that we are in agreement that you did say that. Although Senator Riza did say please put it on record. But you need a double, triple, quadruple confirmation just to make sure that everyone understands that Di Gong did admit and say what he did say. Tsaka to give a chance dun sa mga journalists and yung mga iba siguro nakatulog or nag-break, uy, uy, may na-miss kayo mga highlights dito, balagan nyo to, di ba? And siguro maganda rin sana gagawin ng mga, kasi tayo limited, wala tayong production team. I mean, if I had the production, yep. sabi ko, i-reels nyo every major highlights and juice it out. Really make sure na talaga makita talaga ng tao, ng kalokohan nangyari talaga dito. So, pa 